coffee with, and he... Good morning, guys. This is, uh, this is a special coffee with, and he... No one else. It's just me this morning. <laughs> I'm being a little quiet because, uh, the rest of the house is asleep. I wanted to get back to my roots this morning. Hold on. I don't think uh, we're staying at our friend's house. And I uh, don't believe Brian um, drinks any coffee. So these are all Lynette's mugs. And I've got to keep them all facing towards me. <laughs> if you can figure out what that means. Um, they're all colorful and full of expression. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I'm thankful for a lot of things. We hadn't gone over a lot of that in Thanksgiving. I've got a compilation of Thanksgiving weekend and week sights and sounds and friends and all that. <laughs> that I'm putting together as a, uh, I'm sorry, I know that was loud. A compilation video. It's got some good stuff. Riley actually took my phone and um, he said he shot some B clips for me. <sighs> but it's been a good week. It's been a great week. Thankful for a lot of things. Um, excited to get back to the boat. We've got our boating friends who are all going off in different directions, most of them going south. I need to check on the uh, on Sailing Isla this morning. In fact, I'll do it right after I get off this call or this uh, video. Um, but Sailing in Faith is south. They should be pulling in to Cocoa Beach right now. They uh, Preliminarily and, and last night, I saw some comments that they just had some beautiful weather heading south and the current and the wind behind them, I think they may have even had to slow down and wander off their track a little bit to get into Cocoa Beach this morning after sunup. Because they're not clowns like us that come in in the middle of the night. So I've had a couple of realizations over the last day or two. I love doing these. <clears throat> as uh, my own personal expression. I've never really considered myself as a big talker. I'm not a Elaine Bailey um, who's probably one of the men I know that needs to get all the words out every day. Let me back up. Back, back, back. Um, men and women usually have on average, a number of words they need to get out in a day. Those are averages. I think I have to get more words out than Tracy, which is not average. Um, Lane is like the superstar. I mean, linguistically, he's, he's ripped, he's swole. And he has turned that into, as an adult, becoming a, a writer. And I'm very proud of Lane for that. And Lane inspires me in a lot of ways. So this is my muse for now. I gotta figure out. I, I was talking to a young man just the other evening about what his goals were in life and what he wanted to do when he grows up. And I told him honestly, I'm 48 years old and still not really sure what I wanna do. I'm having fun finding it. This may be it, this right now, but uh, we'll figure it out. And just told him, there's a lot of pressure on you as a 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever year old. You're asked all the time by your parents and your counselors and your school teachers what you wanna do, and some people know what they wanna do and they have a vision and they just go for it. <laughs> So his dad, it was Brian, was uh, surprised that I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, 
I just don't. Uh, Semper Gumby, always flexible. <sighs> We've had a good visit. We've spent some time at the farm. We've spent some time with my sister. We've spent some time with the O'Hearns, J-Lo. Um, went over to the Izagara's last night and had dinner and it was great just to sit down and talk and chat and muse around life. And based on their questions, I'm, I'm gonna be changing some of how I do my videos because it's just hard to imagine or wrap your head around, I guess, what our daily life is compared to having your house parked in the same place all the time. So, a little bit of inspiration from that. Um, I'm gonna kind of flush this thought out. It's been bouncing around on the noggin for a couple of weeks. <laughs> It's 2022. Life's hard in a lot of ways. We've gotten all these conveniences in life and we've developed all this time, but you have to work to buy all those conveniences and it's always a rat race and keeping up with the Joneses and the Smiths and whoever's. There's so much diversification of hobbies and interests and the old Bruce Springsteen song sounded ridiculous when it came out. 57 channels and nothing's on. I, I don't even know how many channels are on most TVs anymore because I, I don't have cable, but it's hundreds, it's hundreds, it's hundreds of things that vie for your interest in video games. Then there's this muse, which is YouTube TV and social media and everyone's fractured. And it's hard for people to find like-minded folks. Used to be developed in relationships at church or at, I'll say it, yacht clubs or elk lodges or moose lodges or VFWs. And we see all those organizations dwindling in size. Now, many of those have gotten smaller over the years pre-COVID. Um, and I think it's because people have stopped or slowed down in their giving and acts of service. One of my dear friends has been involved in Rotary for years and years and years and years. And I remember when he first got involved, he inspired me and taught me a lot as an adult to be involved in a service organization and consistently work on giving back. And I've seen the way that that organization has changed and it's changed a lot for the better and his interest has changed a lot. But it's not as much about boots on the ground and going out and serving people. It's a lot of public health initiatives and other things. And I, I love and dig all that, but it's just different. I've been involved in scouting for 22 years and in that time, which is a fraction of the time that some of the old timers that I know have, have done scouting. Did I say 22 years? I said, I meant 12 years. Maybe 13, but not 20, like 13 years. And I feel like we were a lot more in the community before, especially before COVID. And going out and doing food drives and getting our scouts out to be seen by people instead of being seen by people in front of a Kroger trying to sell popcorn. We were out doing things for people. Many, many times doing cleanups at your church or a charter organization, or if that organization had a widow or something that they needed 
just be hard work done, we would go do that. I don't see that as much anymore, and I think that's just societal changes. I miss that. So, as an adult, when I was younger, I wasn't very outgoing. I know many of you guys don't believe that. I was a lot more introverted. And as an adult, I've bloomed and blossomed into the social butterfly that I am now. Um, Tracy accuses me of needing more of that than she does, and, and that's probably so. I still can be an introvert at times when I get tired or overstimulated or uh, I kind of shut down or need a break or just need to pull back for a little while to recharge. That's what I think. Before we switched to the boating lifestyle, I would uh, I'd have a, a long weekend or something and just work, 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 on my own stuff, and then go to work. And mon our trip meetings were on Monday night. Mondays could be tough. Mondays could be tough for anybody. And just going through the day and feeling like I was going through the motions and drag myself home. And when I get to s get home, it's like, oh, let's get all the boys ready. We got to go. We could have only got like three and a half minutes here at the house. You guys know that we're going to scouts every Monday. It's not the time for you to want to take a shower or want to go play soccer. You're not dressed when I get home, but it's really time to go. Dealing with all those things and then you get to scouts and you get plugged into these youth that needed those role models and needed the discipline and needed people to talk to them about their goals and I would I don't know why but it would surprise me almost every time and I would I would leave scouting or at least the scout meeting that night or that weekend of camping and my enthusiasm enthusiasm um, my cup would just be brimming to the top not like this this is finally getting cool enough for me to drink <laughs> and I would get recharged from the scouts but I would also make my connections with the like-minded men that I really just needed to sharpen my steel with. Um, or you're not going to grow sitting in your own little cup or little box because you're going to agree with yourself and someone's not going to call you out and, and hold you accountable and make you a better person. So you got to be around other people. So that used to be my thing. Um, because it was hard to find in life those kind of like-minded people that are all paddling the canoe in the same direction. My experience so far in boating and sailing is so many of the people They want to live a peaceful life. They don't want some, some of the distractions of land. They just want to be good and true to themselves and true to their family. And I've met some great guys so far and I've loved it. And, and, and that's I get accused of having a, a guy friend in every port, but it's probably more than that. But the, the Michaels and Michael, Michael, Steve, 
I, it's, it's Jim, Brian, it's somebody everywhere. It's, I, that's just Swanee, uh, and, and Charleston, and, and, and everybody scatters, and you're going to bump into them, and you check in on each other, and it's the Kevins, and the, <sighs> we can still keep and make this a better world and place. And that's me just rambling a whole lot. This may just sound like crazy musings this morning because I don't have Tracy keeping me on track. But I wanted to get back to my roots a little bit. I wanted to shout out to Bev. I hadn't heard from him in a while. Um, need to ping him. Need to ping Sailing Isla and him. And I got somebody coming in. I got to run. Oop, that's just the dogs. Um, Need to check in on you, Chalmers. See how you're doing. Um, oh, the dogs are all back in. Hi, Neelan. Hi, you can't get up here. Nope. This is my little place. And you can't be on the furniture. Oh, there's Bear. Bear, come around. So they've got three big dogs here. Hey, guys. How was it outside? Nope. Don't get on. They're being good. They're being great, guys. Um, bear is huge. I don't know what he weighs, but I would say it's two bills easily. It's Saturday. We're heading back to Charleston. Most likely on Monday, we're looking at a problem, an infection on the bottom of Micah's foot. We may need to stay in town one more day. But want to get back to the boat. I want to get some of these things installed, big time. And uh, looking forward to it all. I'm gonna wrap this one up. We'll probably do one in the car out to the farm later. Just talk to the boys about what they've liked different about being back on land and seeing some friends for a few days. But until then, tell your friends and family you love them. Pick up after yourself, leave the world a better place. Spay and neuter your pets. Love you guys. Bye.